How you doing guys, welcome to another video. This is still topic nine, redox processes, volume two, how do we balance a redox equation? Let's go. Okay, volume two, how do we balance a redox equation? We look at balancing redox equations and then we look at a metal activity series. The IB understandings talk about this metal activity series which we'll go through and then using half equations to write the overall balanced equation. And I'm also gonna throw some 3.2 in here where we talk about how halogens can react with halides as well. Okay, so how do we write a redox reaction? To write an overall redox reaction, we must. First, balance the overall half equations and then add them together at the end. So what we want to do is start off with our half equations and then write the equation for the oxidation and reduction reactions separately and then add them together to get the overall equation. And there's a few steps that we can follow to do this. So we need to follow all of these steps to write the half equations and then add them together at the end. Now I have a little saying for this, key elements, we balance the key elements first. That's everything other than oxygen and hydrogen. Then we go on and balance for oxygen by adding water. We balance for hydrogen by adding H+. Then we balance for electrons by adding electrons to the most positive side. And then we make sure that we balance states. This is called the COHES method, K-O-H-E-S. So here's an example. We have an unbalanced redox equation. We have the permanganate ion plus Fe2 plus turning into manganese and Fe3 plus. Now to do this process, what we need to do is identify the half equations. So you wanna think about the things that are the same or what they have come from. So the permanganate ion must form MN2 plus because it's the manganese that we're interested in. So we write that part out. That's gonna be one half equation. The other half equation must involve the iron. So we have Fe2 plus turning into Fe3 plus. Now, we need to then go and balance those separately and it doesn't matter which order we balance them in. I'm gonna start with the Fe2 plus, Fe3 plus because it's probably the easiest. Now the key elements, we have one Fe on both sides so that's balanced so we can simply skip that step. Do we have any oxygen that we need to balance? No, so I can skip that step. Any hydrogen? No, so now I need to balance for electrons. Well the charge on the left hand side is plus two. The charge on the right hand side is plus three. Now I need to get those charges to be balanced so I add one electron to the right hand side to get that charge to plus two. We always add electrons to the more positive side. The other equation, well my key element is manganese. Now the manganese is balanced so I don't have to do anything with that one. But I do have to balance for the oxygens. I have four oxygens on the left, so I have to add four waters on the right. By adding four waters, I've now added in eight hydrogens. So I balance for the eight hydrogens by adding eight H plus to the left hand side, and then the rest of the equation stays the same. So now I've balanced for the oxygens and the hydrogens. But now I've got a problem. My charge is the problem. On the left hand side, I've got eight positives, eight plus, and one minus. So overall, that is going to have a charge of plus seven. Eight from the hydrogens and one from the permanganate gives me a charge of plus seven on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, the manganese is plus two and the water is neutral. So overall, my charge on the right-hand side is plus two. So what I have to do to balance that up, I have to add electrons to the more positive side, and in this case I need to add five of them. So I add five electrons to the left-hand side to balance for the charge. The rest of the equation remains the same. Now, to balance this redox reaction up, I need to balance for the electrons. In the reduction process, we have five electrons being gained, but in the oxidation process, I only have one being lost. So what I need to do is multiply the oxidation reaction by five. I need to times it by five to balance for the electrons. So after I've done that, what I need to do then is just keep everything on the left-hand side on the left-hand side, everything on the right-hand side on the right-hand side. So I'm going to write these two equations out. We have five Fe2 plus that goes to five Fe3 plus, plus five electrons. 
And then I don't have to multiply the other reaction by anything, so it remains the same. So I would have 5Fe, uh, sorry, I would cancel my electrons now, and now I can simply put everything that's on the left-hand side on the left-hand side, everything on the right-hand side on the right-hand side. So you'll see here that I've kept everything that was on the left of the arrows on the, on the reactant side, everything on the right of the arrows on the right-hand side. And now, because we've gone through the process of balancing in each step and balancing for the electrons, the reaction will be overall balanced. Just remember to put in your states. Now, if we need to identify the species acting as the oxidant and the reductant from the equation, then we simply look for the one that undergoes reduction and the one that undergoes oxidation. And then we can apply the little saying, if you're murdered, you can't be the murderer. So for instance, MnO4 minus, it undergoes reduction, so it must be the oxidant. Fe2 plus undergoes oxidation, so it must be the reductant. Remember to make sure you include the charge and remember you to include the state because the state is also important to identify the species. Okay, for the second one, we want to go through the exact same process. We want to work out what the two half equations involve first, and then we want to balance them together and then balance for electrons, putting them together. So here we have a half equation with iodine, and then the other half equation will contain the chlorine. So we have I minus aqueous going to I three minus. Students always find that one hard. And then we have ClO minus aqueous turning into Cl minus aqueous. Now we want to go through the process, the Cohes method to balance for these half equations. So I'm going to do the iodine one first. Key elements. Well, iodine on the right hand side, I have three. On the left hand side, I have one. So I have to put a three out the front of the I minus. I don't have any oxygen and I don't have any hydrogen, so I can skip those two steps. Now I've got to add electrons to the more positive side. So I have minus three on the left hand side because I have three things that are negatively charged. And on the right hand side, I have only one thing that has a minus one charge. Now I add electrons to the more positive side. In this case, the more positive side would be the right hand side. So I need to add electrons to the right hand side to balance for the charge. So we have three I minus aqueous goes to I three minus plus two electrons. So that is the oxidation reaction. On the right hand side, starting with the key elements, the chlorines, well, they're both the same. We have one chlorine on the left, one chlorine on the right. So that's balanced. Moving down, the oxygen though is not balanced, so I need to add one water to the right hand side. Adding in the one water means I've added in two hydrogens, so now I put two hydrogen ions on the left hand side to balance for that water, and then I can rewrite the rest of the equation at the same. Now the electrons, again I'm looking for the charge. We have two positives from the hydrogens on the left, and a one minus for the ClO on the, on the left as well. So that gives me an overall plus one charge. On the right, the chlorine is minus one, the water is neutral, so I have minus one on the right hand side. So I need to balance by adding electrons to the more positive side, so I need to add two electrons to the left hand side to balance for that charge. So this means that this will be the reduction reaction. Now for this one, we've got oxidation which is losing two electrons, reduction which is gaining two electrons. That's nicely balanced. So we don't have to do any multiplying for this redox reaction. What we can simply do is put them together by keeping the things on the left hand side on the left hand side, keeping the things on the right hand side on the right hand side, and then just adding the two equations together to get our overall balanced redox reaction. Remember to make sure that you write the, the states. If you don't write the states, you'll often lose the mark. If you're asked to write the oxidation or reduction half equation, you start by writing the things above. Again, we might be asked to identify the oxidant and the reductant. Well, if I minus has undergone oxidation, it must be the reductant. And if ClO has undergone reduction, it must be the oxidant. The oxidant and reductant are always on the reactant side of the reaction. 
Okay, a metal reactivity series. Well, the activity series just ranks metals in according to how easily they undergo oxidation. So things that can undergo oxidation are right at the top of the activity series. They're very strong reduction, re reductance, and that means they undergo oxidation easily. Right down the bottom, we have things that don't undergo oxidation very easily and are very weak reductants. What we're asked to do is to identify whether or not a reaction will occur if we have a metal and some metal ions. So the, for a reaction to occur, we need a metal that is a stronger redu reductant or reducing agent, and then we need metal ions that are a weaker reducing agent or a stronger oxidizing agent. So for instance, if we have aluminium chloride and we add that to silver metal, then we can identify the two things on the reactivity series. We can see that AL, AL and AL3 plus are very much above AG. So that means that what will be happening is AG will be trying to force AL3 plus to lose electrons, but it can't. AL3 plus is a very weak reductant, which means that it won't be able to un it won't be able to force Ag to lose electrons. So in this case, there will be no reaction because the Al ions are above silver metal, there will be no reaction taking place. Al3 plus is a weak oxidant, Ag is a weak reductant, so that means there will be no reaction taking place. For the second one, iron chloride is added to magnesium metal. So here we have Fe3 plus and magnesium metal. So again, we go along to the activity series and we locate where these are on that activity series. Magnesium is a fairly reactive metal and iron will be below it. So iron 3 plus is below the magnesium metal. Magnesium is a fairly reactive metal. So what this means is that the iron 3 plus will be able to force Mg to undergo oxidation. Mg is a strong reductant, so it will happily lose its electrons. The Fe3 plus is a relatively strong oxidant, so it will like to undergo oxidation. So that means that the electrons will transfer from the magnesium to the iron, and there will be a reaction taking place. So a reaction will re occur and the magnesium will react with the Fe3 plus ions. Now another way to think about this is electrons can only flow down the table. So if you have something above and something below, electrons can flow in that direction. Okay, 3.2, some periodic trends. We need to look at the reactions of halogens with halide ions. So here I've got the group 17 halogens on the left and Fluorine is a very strong oxidant. That means it wants to gain electrons really, really badly. It's got the highest electronegativity, so it has a strong affinity for electrons. So it's a powerful oxidizing agent. That means that it can rip electrons off halide ions. So for example, if we have fluorine gas and bromide ions, the fluorine is strong enough to rip those electrons off the bromine to form fluoride ions and elemental bromine, Br2. What we're looking for here is essentially that the halogen must be above the halide for that to happen. So in the next situation, we have bromine liquid and iodine, iodide ions. The bromine is above the iodide, so it will be strong enough to rip those electrons off the iodine. In the last example, we have chloride ions and iodine solid, where there will be no reaction. The iodine is not a strong enough oxidant to take the electrons away from the chlorine. So we're looking for a halogen above the halide ion, which is below. That's the only way a reaction can occur between those two species. The halogen must be above, the halide ion must be below. If it's the opposite way around, there can be no reaction. All right, volume two, some top tips. Remember the Cohes method, and remember that more reactive metals equals stronger reductants, and you want to have those reactive metals above the ions of the solution that you're putting them in. Electrons flow down the activity series. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.